Okay, the biblical truth of our hymns, I have number 86. And we're looking at another Philip Paul Bliss. Once for all. I couldn't find any history about this, but remember Philip Bliss is the one where he and his wife were on the train, the train wreck, and he went back in that train for his wife. And the only thing that survived, I believe, was a briefcase with a few manuscripts and hymns that he had written. And we've already done that hymn that was found. But we're looking at once for all. And this is a plain and simple one today. It's a wonderful hymn. And it starts off free from the law. Well, I can't imagine a seven-day Adventist thing in this hymn. Can't picture anybody who would be under the law. That Paul wrote to the one in the church saying, you know, you guys are going back in the law. You're wrong. We're not under the law. I'm free from the law. It's the law that showed me who I am. And it's the law that keeps me right with God. And that the law shows me who I am. The law shows me what God's not pleased with. Uh, now, is it a law that I do not get a tattoo? Yeah, that's under the law. God shall God said, "Thou shalt print no mark, make no cuttings in the flesh." So if that's how God felt that He put it in writing. For the law, it'd be kind of wise as a Christian not to mark up your body. And what's one of the number one tattoos that I talked to a man in? It's the skull. Skull is death. So free from the law, I'm not under the law, I'm not under the condemnation, but the law is a rule and guidance how to live properly according to what God as suggested, free from the law, oh happy condition. I, as a Christian, don't have to have a measured life. I don't have to follow rules and regulations to a T. I, I, I don't have to sit there and figure out, do I have to bring a cow? Do I bring... Wheat? Do I bring a lamb? Do I? Is it the 15th? Is it the 14th? Uh, and I tell you, it's a miserable thing to be a diabetic because a diabetic has to live a measured life. And you got to count your protein, you got to count your calories, you got to count your carbohydrate, and you got to watch your fat. And it's not, it's not, you know, I just go well you can go eat it's unhealthy you can as a christian go commit adultery it's unhealthy unwise and it don't look good i mean thou shalt not it's not my salvation but be very wise to hear what god that says thou shalt not it's not going to save my soul but thou shalt not may acquire for me at the judgment seat of Christ to get less wood, hay, and stubble and maybe some more gold, silver, and precious stones. But Jesus. Wow. One of few hymns that actually has the name Jesus. That's interesting. Jesus has bled. So, it's the blood. It's the blood that saves our soul. Not the law. And the Bible says in Acts 20, 28 that it's God's blood. It's not water baptism, it's not church attendance, it's not what I can 
Do you see the law says what I can do? And somebody goes, well, I'm good. Well, you're relying on the law. Because those that were under the law, they had to do this, they had to do this, they had to do that, they had to do this, and do this, and do that, and do this, and I've done it, and look how good I am. And we are in the age of grace. We are under the age of the death, burial, and resurrection according to the scriptures of Jesus Christ. And it's what Jesus has done. And not what I have done. So salvation is all under the blood. What do you do with some Baptist churches? What do you do with some churches where they teach water as a means of salvation? I guess you can't have this family in their congregation. And there's no remission, a abatement, a relaxation, a remission of the extreme, a release, a letting go. Caused by the law. I mean, and there's no remission, cursed by the law. What did the law do? The law said, I am guilty. What, what did Paul say? The law showed that I am carnal and lusty because the Bible says, the law says, thou shalt not covet. And lust after is the same as coveting. The law says, honor thy father and mother, and I was not that perfect child. And many a times we all went against our parents at one period of time. And that honor thy mother and father says, I'm guilty. The law says, thou shalt not steal. And I have taken things. I'm in a bad habit of taking pens. Unknowingly. And there are times I'll get home, empty my pocket, say, oh, where did I get this pen from? I've stolen it. Well, what's the law said? You're guilty. That's why they don't want the Ten Commandments in the courtroom. It shows you're guilty. The law says you have to be proven, to, you know, to be guilty. And yet the law of God says you're guilty. Now you may not be guilty of the crime you're being brought before the judge. But the law somewhere, of the writing of the law of some point of our life, at least my life. I have been guilty of something of the point of the law. And James says, if I offend in one point, I am guilty of all. Cursed by the law, the law says, no, you can't go to heaven. And bruised by the fall, that's Adam and Eve. Okay, psychiatry, blame your mom, blame your grandma. Okay, yeah, I can blame Adam and Eve. But what good is that going to do by blaming Adam and Eve? Because now I'm living the consequences. Now there are children, and it's sorry, they're born with STDs. They're born with, with these drug addictions because of the mother or father. Okay, it's happened. Blaming the parents is not going to relieve you. And something has to be done so you can be what your parents have carried over onto you. Adam and Eve has carried over to me sin and death. I can complain and worry and, and gripe and, and, and march and do whatever I want to do. And I'm going to die as a sinner for the wages of sin is death. Or... I can come to Jesus Christ and apply the blood of Jesus Christ and be cleansed and be relieved and be right with God through Jesus Christ. Grace has redeemed us as being bought back. We're sold under sin. We are we have the Satan as our father. And God says, Come to Calvary, come for my blood, for the cleansing, 
Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And I'll purchase you back with my blood and you'll be mine and I will adopt you. And when I adopt you, I ain't going to lose you, lose you anymore. What is it? Once for all. I don't go two times a year and partake of the suffering and death of the body and blood of Jesus. I don't partake of the, the suffering and bleeding and eating and drinking of Christ's blood uh, weekly. I don't have to nail Jesus Christ to that cross again uh, three times a week. I don't have to put Christ on that cross and have him suffer and bleed again seven days a week. Christ died once for our sins and is seated at the right hand of the Father and you can eat and drink all the wafers and drink all the, the alcohol or grape juice, whatever you do, you're still going to die and go to hell without the blood of God being applied to your sins and not taken orally. You're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, by faith, not orally. Now, now, not tomorrow, not yesterday, now, and this hymn was written in 1873, now, now, we live for the now. I can't do anything about yesterday. Yesterday's come, whatever I've done for the Lord, amen, glory to God, whatever I didn't do for the Lord, I confess it, put under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, and today, now. Well, tomorrow. There is no tomorrow. Now. We are free. Again, there's that free from the law. We are free. I'm free. I have been spiritually circumcised by the death, burial, and, and by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, according to the scriptures. This flesh may sin. This flesh of the Lord tarries is going to go in a graveyard. But my soul is God's soul. It's free. It does not get soiled. It stays clean. I am free to say, Lord, I don't want to sin. And I am free also to say, Lord God, I don't care what you think. I don't care what you wrote. I'm going to do it and nothing's going to stop me. And God may not send lightning bolts, or he may. God may not chase me, or he may. I'm free. And what did salvation cost me? Absolutely nothing. What do I need to open up my purse when I get to the gates of heaven? Nothing. It's free. There's no condemnation. John chapter 3 says, without Christ, you're already in condemnation. You need to get out of condemnation. And the only way to get out of condemnation is through the gospel and through the blood of Jesus Christ that he suffered and died and was buried and arose again the third day according to scriptures. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession made unto salvation. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You done it? No condemnation. Now, if you lived after the flesh, and anything you had not done for Jesus Christ, it gets burned, the wood, hay, or stubble, but you don't burn. You don't have a purgatory. You don't spend time in a fire. Your dead work gets burned. And you suffer a loss of a crown, inheritance, or reward. Jesus, whoa, that's twice. Jesus provides a perfect salvation. There's no other salvation. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. 
the perfect way of salvation, not of baptism, not of church membership, not of giving to charity, not behaving yourself, not being a good boy or good girl, not getting good grades, not cleaning the floor, or doing the dishes, or helping mom out on Mother's Day. It is the perfect salvation of God by God for us sinners. Come on to me. There's a hymn. Come on to me. Thou. You don't want him to hear me. It's an invitation. God says, Come now. Let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white. God says, Come. God says to the Christian, Go preach the gospel. And God says to the sinner, Unrepented, Come. Oh, hear his sweet call. When you hear that preacher, when you hear that co-worker, when you hear your, your brother, when you hear your, your cousin, when you hear them have an open Bible and they're telling you about Jesus, they don't hate you. They love you and they have a sweet message. Now, the message of VBS and the message of, you know, let's go watch this movie at church or come, you know, Anything but the gospel, anything but the gospel is poison and not sweet. Say this prayer is a poison. You'll be fine, it'll work out, is a poison. Come, do this, is a poison. Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures, was buried and rose again according to the scriptures, three days and three nights. And if you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone for by grace, are you saved through faith and not of yourselves? It's a gift of God. That is sweet. That's nature sweet. That's God sweet. Come! And he saves us once for all. After I got saved April 21st, 1987, I did not need to get re-saved. I did not need to be re reborn again. I did not need to do it again. Now, what happens, Sally, after you were saved and you sin? I mean, you, you, you still sin. Yeah, I sin. But what, what, no, what do you do? If we confess our sins, He's faithful enough. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all righteousness. As a saved child of God, when I sin, I say, Lord God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry because I wanted to do it. Lord, I'm sorry. I didn't even know I was going to do that. Lord, I had an idea it was coming. I fought it. I fought it. And it won. Lord, I desired. I gave it a little effort, but I did it, Lord. We confess our sin. We don't get born again and again. I'm already in the family of God. Children of God, there it is, by the blood of Jesus Christ, by the indwelling Holy Spirit, that only comes to those who are saved. Oh, glorious calling, come. Surely His grace will keep us from falling. You know what? You're not going to fall as a Christian. Now, you're going to fall in sin, and you're going you're to get picked right back up. And if you stay down in the ground, you're going to, when you die, you're going to be still absent from the body and present with the Lord. You're not ever going to lose your salvation. You're not ever going to be, you know, God's going to say, nope, can't take you. God ain't going to say, you're a curse and get away from me. You, you, you can't lose it. Like I said, you, you can choose as a Christian to fall in sin and you'll die and you'll go to the Lord. Salvation of God is once for all eternal. You couldn't lose it because it's not yours to lose. If God would have left salvation up to me, I lose my keys all I lose my keys in my pocket. I forget which pocket I put my keys in. Sometimes I put my keys in the right pocket, sometimes I accidentally put them in the left. Oh, where do they go? It's not mine. It's God's salvation. You know when you say, my salvation. No, it's not. 
It's God's salvation. Passing from death to life. Absent from the body and present with the Lord. You don't die. This body may die and go in the grave, but your soul is with God. One day the rapture is going to happen, and some Christians are not going to die. Oh, his call. Blessed, happy salvation. One for all. You know what Mr. Bliss is saying? Jesus Christ is the only one offering nothing else. You know, I, I, I did not find out if, if Mr. Bliss, I wonder if Mr. Bliss was a Catholic at one time. Or if he had adventure into studying the Catholics. Because the Catholics say the Mass is salvation over and over and over again. The Catholics say we're crucifying Jesus Christ and we're going to make this wafer into the body. We're going to make this booze into the blood of Jesus Christ. Every time the priest raises up and says his hocus pocus and B5 full foam and his magic with the boondick cup, boom! Christ has died and we're going to munch on his body and we're going to drink his blood. Nope. Once for all. That's what Hebrews said. That's why Hebrews has been footnoted, erased from Catholic Bible. Because there are places in Hebrews it says once. Sat down once. Well, we don't like that. Because if our Catholic practitioners see that it's just once, they won't come to Mass. Stay away from Mass. Come to Calvary and do it once for all. Once for all. O sinner, receive it. Salvation can't be done by your wife. Salvation can't be done by your, your mother. Your brother can't get saved for you. Your pastor can't do it for you. Your priest can't do it for you. You have to come. Once for all. You didn't get it. O brother, believe it. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. For with the heart man believeth unto salvation. For God so loved the world that whosoever believeth. Believe. Cling to the cross. That's the means of salvation. The burden will fall. Your sins will be gone. Christ has redeemed, bought, purchased once for all. You don't need to be re reborn again. You don't need to be re re saved. You need to just do it once. Once. Now, maybe you want, maybe, you know, you've done such. You, you know, Lord, I just want to rededicate my life. Now, that's not getting saved again. Rededicate. I mean, there there may be people who got saved as a young child. And they've grown up and they say, you know, Lord, I received Christ, I'll say, six years old. And I, I, I put my faith, you know, Jesus, I, I'm a teenager now. I'm almost a teenager. I'm a young adult. And I'm not getting, I'm, you know what? I got my right facilities. I, I'm in my right mind of growing. I know who I am. I was saved when I was six years old, but you know, Father, as an adult, or not, as a teenager, as a young adult, I want to uh, acknowledge uh, who I am. I know what I am and what I've done. You know, Lord, I just want to confess my sins and I just want to get it right with you. I got it right when I was six years old. I got it right when I was seven years old. But you know, I want to really stand up for myself. And I want to proclaim from my mouth, hey, I want to walk with you. I didn't want to go to hell when I was six years old. I didn't want to go to hell when I was seven years old. I didn't want to go to hell when I was eight years old. 
And now I'm 13, now I'm 17, now I'm 20. You know, Lord, I want to walk with you. I want to walk under my own in intention for and of you. I'm not getting saved again. I just want to give you my life. That's what that is. That's not being re-saved. It's just, you know what, Lord? I know what I'm doing. Glory to God. 